All right, we're back for part two of constraint layouts. Today we're going to be focusing purely on guidelines. And the reason I'm going to focus on guidelines is I feel like they deserve their own period of time because they can be confusing to understand. And I'm also going to give you some recommendations on how I like to use guidelines. And hopefully that helps make it easier for you to start using them. And again, we're going to use our cat theme. So I put together a very quick mock-up here with some photos of cats here in the middle. The idea is maybe we're making an app where we have to vote on which cat is cuter. So we have a cat here on the left and a cat here on the right. And then maybe there's two buttons underneath there for you to make your vote. On the left here, maybe there is a list of cats that you can select from. And maybe there's a different list of cats on the right side. Don't pay attention to dimensions and whatnot. We're gonna make this look more accurate in Android Studio. But the idea here is to do something that we can utilize guidelines for that will actually make it um, easy to show off the power of them. So what I'm going to do here, as always, I'm going to put this in landscape because that's the design that I'm working in. I am zooming to about, you know, whatever I can see most of my screen there. And I'll try to like expand stuff around as well. Um, I really like this little search feature here when I'm working in the design tool. Again, as you get more comfortable, you will be finding yourself primarily working in the text tool. I am focusing on the design tool so that it's easier for you to understand. But ultimately, what you're going to find yourself doing is you're going to find like the design tool can just be a little clunky at times. Although it is phenomenal compared to where it used to be, it's sometimes easier to jump over to text view to make some of the detailed changes that you've got in mind. So I'm going to look for some guidelines. We're going to start with some vertical guidelines first, and I'm going to put one here. Notice that you get this arrow here. This is pointing to the left. So basically you're saying you're 85 device pixels from the left, or you can click for the right and make it 507. I actually do not like using device pixels, and this is one of the recommendations I got for you. I recommend clicking this again, and you're going to see a percentage. In our example, we're going to do, I'm just going to set it to 20%. So 20% of our screen on the left will be our list view. And not a text view. Um, go back in here and grab another guideline. And we are going to make this another vertical guideline. And again, you've got this. We're going to click this three times. And we're going to change this to 0 0.8 because that would give us 20% here on the side. Another thing that I want to do here is make one more here in the middle just so it's easier to line things up again i'm just gonna you can do all this with just typing as well like i said um, but i'm just trying to show you how to do it all through the ui then we're gonna gr go and grab two more guidelines but this time we're gonna be using horizontal guidelines so let's say we put a horizontal guideline at like 75 percent from the top now see this is one of the wonky things i was talking about like if you go over here to click on this it disappears but notice over on the right side here, it actually is switching to the correct place. So let's make this 75%. Um, and I'm just guessing at these ratios. And maybe what we want to do is do like a 20% down for the photos. So let's do another horizontal. And we're going to make this a 20%. Um, and it's like I click that again. That's actually pretty close. And I'm just going to round it up to make it easier. So we've got, you can see these little gray lines here, and if I zoom out and scroll down, you can also see it in this view as well. And you can see how it has the percentage mark here. You may find it actually easier to work in this view over this view. That's completely up to you at the end of the day. Um, for me though, I'm just out of habit, I typically work in this view. And sometimes I'll jump down here if I need to. Uh, so let's go ahead and add our photos in here. So we need some image views. And I want to take one here, and let's just select, we're going to select this cat here. And I want to make this just really tiny to start with, and let's pull it up. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Um, all I care about is that it's docked here on the right, from the center, and up. Um, eh, we can make this thing a little bit wider. you got to be careful what you grab there. All right. And let's grab another image view. And this time we'll make it my favorite cat picture. This cat looks like it's got like a, a smiley face. All right, then we're gonna bring this up here. Again, we want this to be small enough to fit in that. 
I will say um, getting images sized and cropping correctly is actually a video in and of itself, which I can do at some point. But um, for now, this should get you started for constraint layouts is our focus. Make sure the blue dot is highlighted here. Sometimes when you're doing them that close together, you may not see them. Blue dot means you have a constraint. White dot means you do not. And notice that you have to have two constraints to find uh, one vertical, one horizontal to make sure that everything renders correctly. All right, so we have those two. Maybe what we're going to do now is we're going to add our text here, which I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Because what I want to do is I want to take this text here and I want to just center it over this cat. There's other ways that we could actually do this, but I think I think this is probably um, the best way. Maybe we'll name this guy Tiger. And let's put another one here, and we're gonna just do it here, and we're gonna do it here, and here. Notice I didn't hook it there. Um, and then let's just name this cat uh, Daisy. So this will be Cat Two, ah, Cat Two, and then we'll name this Daisy. Um, notice I did have a verse symbol, and I'm just going to center that between these two cats here and here, and then I'm just going to set it to um, right there. There we go. And we're just going to change the text to verses. And then there is a way uh, to down here for text alignment. We'll just set that to centered, and again, I didn't hook that one. Uh, another way that we could actually do that is we could actually align that right into the center by assigning it to this constraint and to this constraint. So notice that's your two options here. So I wanted to show you both of those uh, because in this case, I do probably want it centered here, but you can also center it between two other things that are constrained. All right, so let's go next and we're going to constrain this to this constraint line. And we're just going to center that between these two. Notice that it drags back and forth. And this is going to be the thing that says, which cat is cuter? Question mark. Hit enter there. Notice you should be actually naming a lot of this stuff. And over here, you will see, like, I'm not using string resources and I'm not using a content description. If you were doing a production app, please make sure you do those things. All right, so we're going to go back here. And we're going to grab a button, and our button is just going to be this big button, and we'll put whatever text you decide you want to put in there. And I literally am just going to center that, and if I could get that, uh, you can see kind of what, what I mean by some of the wonkiness at time. Although, like I said, this is extremely good compared to what it used to be. Uh, we're just going to center these in each of their respective quadrants. And I'll show you some other cool stuff here. So we have our cat one. Now, say you wanted this to be centered here, you can actually left and right uh, constrain it to the cat picture itself because of where it falls. So let's go in here and get the, uh, we don't actually want to do a list. We want to do a linear layout and we want to do a vertical one. So we're going to do that here. We're going to constrain that there, which um, it didn't click. There we go. I want to constrain on the top. And we don't really care about this, but I actually want this to be match constraint and this to be wrap content. So it won't be anything right now. I notice I've got this spot in here. So let's just go and drag a linear layout uh, or a cat inside the linear layout. And we're going to pick this funny cat. This funny cat is actually going to just have a height of 100. Um, and then, eh, let's make it 75. 75 looks like it'd be better. And then literally we're just gonna copy and we're going to paste another cat in there. So you can see how now I've got a linear layout set up so that it's constrained inside our constraint view. And yet, you know, if I copy another one or paste another one in there, for example, now I have three cats there. Uh, we can copy this entire thing and we can paste it in here. And you can see that we've got this here. Notice that they've got the names the same, which is gonna be a problem. Uh, we will fix that here in a minute. So let's take this linear layout, the one that we just copied, put it there, zoom out a little bit, take this one, put it here. That's still good. Let's just change these views to like 
damage we do 10. That's one thing I wish it would do is actually update the names for you. But like I said, in production, you're actually going to be naming these correctly. And actually, you wouldn't even do your linear layout exactly like I've got it. What you would end up doing is a list view here that can scroll and has a um, basically data that can get fed in dynamically so it, it renders correctly. So anyway, a couple things to note. Um, if we were to change the size of this phone, for example, which we will do here, you can see right now I'm using kind of a small phone. Let's just go to Pixel 2 XL. Um, and then we're still in landscape mode here. And you can see how everything stayed centered, which is also another reason why maybe you want this cat image centered in here where you can uh, combine it there. And you could dynamically even have the cat image scale a little bit with that constraint. Uh, the button as well, you could constrain it to the image itself. And then let's just show you portrait view real quick here. So you can see here how portrait view, everything scaled appropriately. Um, this cat image did not scale because we did not have it constrained on the right side and we did not have it set to match the constraint. So a couple things that you absolutely can do uh, when you're designing your app. But really the idea of this was to show you how to use guidelines. And hopefully this has been helpful. And if it has, please leave me a thumbs up and otherwise keep coding until next time.